Welcome to Stampscaping 101. I just watched a video on traditional um, Chinese ink painting, okay? And I saw a technique uh, just using their brushwork and uh, making waterfalls out of, uh, I don't know, just various kinds of textures and uh, uh, brushwork uh, types of uh, strokes. And I thought, you know, I think we can apply that to our stamping and our use of the mystic hills here. I don't know, maybe any type of hill structure, um, you know, mountain structures. I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe not like jagged peaks or something like that. But um, I think we can, I think we can do this here, just because. In this mystic series, we don't have to have everything anchored down, so, you know, kind of structured. Um, there's a lot of um, empty negative space in between objects, okay? So that's really, really conducive for, um, I don't know, kind of a, a looseness of application and I don't know just I, I guess just keeping things as varied as we want now, now what I'm getting at is is that you don't have to use these um, kind of in a really specific way um, as far as linking things together okay it's just like in other words I get I guess a simpler way to say it is you have a lot of things that are kind of floating in kind of uh, space, not outer space, but just in terms of uh, location, distance, etc. Okay, so I'm gonna have some of these um, types of falls coming down this way. We'll go here, here, and then I'll have another one over here. I don't know, that's the idea here. You know, because I'm trying this out here, we might as well practice several different uh, falls here if we can. I'll use the smaller um, uh, Mystic Hills here in the uppermost region to hopefully give it kind of a sense of uh, I don't know, distance, maybe. Maybe these ones should be kind of stamped out lighter um, in addition to um, higher up on the composition, but you know, this is just a little test here, okay? And if this works out okay, I'll stamp something down here in the foreground. So what I'm going to have is between these mountains, we're going to have this kind of these cascading um, types of falls coming down this way. Okay. All right. So we're going to try that here uh, with my watercolor pencil. I'm just kind of trying to imagine it right here. And um, I'll try to keep the strokes kind of uh, going in a certain type of directional pattern here. And each one of the falls will kind of be falling down into um, kind of this cloudy mist. Um, yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> we'll see how it looks in application. Okay, so as I've done before with um, this watercolor pencil, this one happens to be the Derwent watercolor pencil. I'll just add um, some of the media at the top, uh, I don't know, locations, the tops of the shapes of these um, mountains here, okay. And I'm going roughly down about Oh, I'd say about halfway. There's no, I, I'm just uh, thinking that here. It's not, this isn't like an instructional video as far as, um, you know, what you should be doing. I'm just, that's what, that's, that's my idea. And I'm doing it kind of roughly halfway down because I'll pull some of that tone down this way with my water um, application here, okay? So in other words, you don't have to go all the way down. And plus, if you want to add more, you can always add more. You know, it's always better than to add too much, and then you're kind of stuck with it. 
on this paper in many ways. So just make it a little bit um, and I, sparse, I guess. It's like um, seasoning uh, food or something like that with salt. You can always add more salt. Okay, with this you can always add more watercolor pencil. Okay, so let's see. So this is going to be going down roughly like this, okay? And this one will be coming like this, okay? Yeah, I'm just trying to get my bearings as far as um, where my uh, shadow will be um, to each side of these falls here, okay? All right, so I'm trying to get the gist of it, and right here, we'll have it coming down like this. And the whole thing about this is we want to keep it looking fairly loose and graceful brush light, okay? Um, as far as like good brush work goes. That's what I'm going to try to make it look like. I'm not a good, you know, I'm not good with a brush. Okay, I'm inexperienced, I should say. So, I don't want it to look like that, though. When we want to have a, a piece, you know, and someone says, Oh, how nice, that looks, you know, like you've never done it before. Uh, not really the response that you, you know, that you want to get. Not that I'm doing it for the response, but I'm just saying in terms of uh, just the, the, the finish of something you want it to look. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you kind of know what you're doing, uh, at, at least a little bit. <laughs> so that's what I'm going after here. And if I don't get it, no big deal, you know. Um learning experience. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more like that. So see, these are kind of my, my falls here. All right, let's get some water and let's see what we can do. Um, let's see if we've kind of learned anything with our um, brushwork um, thus far and my uh, experience, experiments, I should say. Okay, let's, uh, let's see, should we start top to bottom or bottom to top? Let's, let's start with a smaller imagery up here, okay? So going in here and, yeah, yeah it's a little bit too sloppy. I have a lot of water on this. Let's remove some of that and kind of follow this down like this a little bit. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay. Now this is kind of going down into this um, foggy, uh, cloudy area, so I'll kind of work it. I'm working from the top down, but also from the bottom up like this, okay? Okay, now I'm going to try to get, um, let's see, they were adding kind of these strokes like this in their water area, and that's what I'm going to try to do. I'll try to transition it a little bit. I'm going to use um, white pigment ink, which, you know, picks up the slack as far as, um, you know, my weaknesses go uh, because it covers them up. <laughs> it doesn't cover them up, but it, it, it obscures them. I guess that's, that's the word I was looking for the other day. Um, you know, things that you can cover up things with. Opaque media, translucent media. You know, uh, pigment ink, um, oh, I don't know, paint pens, things like that. They can obscure kind of the things that you're, you know, a little bit weaker at, but it also strengthens um, your strengths. Um, not bad media to, 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 to utilize. Okay, so let's see. Go 
going down here like so. I'm getting a little bit freer with my um, kind of app. Oops, I picked up some blue there. Uh, it's okay. Uh, in my palette. Okay, so coming up like this. I'm getting a little bit freer in terms of my applications just because I know what that uh, what that pigment ink can do. Uh, that I'll be applying over this. All right, so. Uh, so we're going on the second tier. Just right down here, I'll try to give it a little bit of kind of interesting shape, like, you know, a little bit irregular, um, like it's uh, some clouds. So you have to be kind of thinking in negative space right here and kind of forming um, the shape of that cloudy structure down here uh, with the use of positive um, shapes. So in other words, as I'm kind of going down here, I'm watching what I'm uh, retaining in terms of the white of the paper, or just a lighter area of the paper, okay? Yeah, this one's not quite so developed, but so that right here, that one's better. All right, let's go down here, working on the second falls area. Okay, now, right here, I'm going to stroke from the bottom up. I think that's what they were doing in that um, video, like this, okay? You know, like so. Yeah, let me do that. I'm going to do it on all the falls, kind of while I'm kind of <laughs> getting this kind of stroke down right here. I'll just do all, uh, both of the, uh, the lower section ones at the same time. So I get kind of my motion down like this. Okay, I'll develop them a little bit more. And probably with some additional um, watercolor pencil, um, maybe. Well, let's see how it goes. I'm just wondering if it's kind of dark enough. I, I, could, I could come in here and uh, develop a little bit more um, variation with uh, something like uh, colored pencil too, or just, you know, you can apply your um, watercolor pencil, but just don't, you know, um, add water to it. In other words, you're just using it kind of like a, a colored pencil. And what I'm looking at specifically when I'm mentioning all this is some areas just don't look um, quite um, as... Oh, there's not enough contrast in areas, so I'll, I'll darken up some areas of the mountain. See, right, right here, it's kind of all the same value. I'll see if I can kind of lighten up some of it right here with just with uh, some water and uh, the manipulation of the, uh, the media on the surface. Okay, now down here, I think I'm going to add some sort of um, foreground, so maybe I'll wait you know, in this area. But let's kind of develop some, a little bit more of an interesting cloud uh, shape within this space right here. So just coming like here, see this right here, I have some of it water right there. A little bit of that grayish tinge, maybe it's not dark enough here. Let me pick up some more of this and come down here like that.
I, mean, I, I, I tend to get a little bit more comfortable with this brush as I'm working on these pieces. Again, it's just because through, you know, years of uh, not doing very much brush work, if any, I've uh, just come to start uh, picking it up to use it, um, you know, for different applications, specifically with this um, Mystic series of designs. Just because I think it's really conducive for the, uh, eh, kind of for the overall look of these pieces. Not that you have to use them this way, but it is a really fun way to utilize them. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's look for some areas in here. Let's go for a little bit more tone in here. Okay. You know, kind of just to, uh, I don't know, I guess create a little bit of space between, um, you know, the top of the fall and the next fall. So I'm putting that little bit of, I mean, it's a very faint tinge of a, Oh, gray, right over that. Okay, in this fall right here, I'll put a little bit of tone in the background. I mean, it's really, I don't know, it's like barely anything. It's like 5% gray or something like that. Okay, but I, I think those, I don't know, I think it looks okay so far. And I, let's see, let me bring a little bit more uh, tone into this area right here. It's interesting kind of putting this watercolor pencil on top of the kind of moist cardstock. It has a different feel that's going on, kind of, I don't know, it's like smoother or something like that. Okay, um, hmm, let's see, I've seen if I have one of my images already mounted up here, I guess I don't. Um, let's try, maybe the Mystic Hills right here. Let's give this a try here. It could be anything in the foreground there that you want. And I'll try to model this one as well a little bit. Working with stays on, just, I don't know, so it, uh, the uh, images don't go back into solution or something like that as I'm painting over them, you know, as opposed to using like dye based inks. And let's use this one. Just a little peekaboo application of this right side, um, Mr. Kills on the right side. Okay, so I'll go up higher though. We'll go about like so. It'll just look like it's a little bit more distant from the front one. Like about like that. All right. <laughs> Blowing on it. When have I ever done that lately? but it stays on dries pretty fast. It doesn't take much coaxing for it to dry.
hit it with that. I have um, I have uh, re-inked my stays on recently, so it might be a touch juicy. All right, let's add in some additional tone into our forms here. It might be kind of interesting to add in some color into the foreground, but I, I'm going to keep this one pretty basic and just keep this more of a, you know, an exercise and uh, seeing, it, you know, what we can do with the, you know, the creation of something from, I wouldn't say nothing, but um, just kind of the use of negative space again um, within these forms right here to create that uh, kind of waterfally look. Uh, again, I think I do need a little bit more of a, of a contrast, you know, next to these falls in a couple areas. So adding that in now. It looks pretty good. See, I'm kind of adding it down and adding it in a very slow progression. I'm not using this as black so much. I'm using it as just a very pale gray. It's almost like I'm using a uh, like a piece of uh, you know graphite, you know, you know, pencil. All right. Yeah, let's loosen up those um, strokes that I just applied a little bit more. Kind of a you know, semi damp brush right here. Not uh, not too wet though. Uh, that's just for myself though, for control or slightly more control, I should say, because I do not have ultimate control over this. But you don't have to either. Okay. Now, in our forms down below, where I've just added in our foreground elements, Mystic Hills um, right, um, I have added some of the colored uh, watercolor pencil in the area kind of in within the forms here and eh, just slightly okay just to get them modeled a little bit more okay I still want you know some of those rocks within that space to be um, you know a little bit uh, lighter so that they look um, like they're catching some of that light. And then we'll kind of take this on a vertical kind of application here. Grab some of that paint like that, put a little water in this, and I'll come this way with it. Okay. All right, now let me try to model these mountains a little bit more. The darker areas of the mountains will just get a little bit darker. 
for the most part. So that kind of the mid-tones, um, which, you know, they're largely defined by now. In other words, most of it's mid-tone with the use of all that um, watercolor paint um, kind of spread about. Um, I just want to make that air, those areas look a little bit lighter. So the, you know, this area right in here isn't the darkest thing. You know, we'll add something a little bit darker so that by contrast, um, some areas will seem lighter, okay? And it, it just kind of creates a little bit more variation. And when you do this too, it'll kind of, you know, be, this is about these waterfalls here. It'll just uh, hopefully make the waterfalls stand out a little bit more. All right, um, hmm, I just used this fishing boat yesterday. Maybe I'll use the same one again. Stamp it out, kind of get my bearings in terms of uh, um, the size of it and where I'd want it within this scene. And being that we have shadows, you know, within this whole space and over all of our objects, we'll add a little bit of a, kind of an anchoring, a little bit of shadow work here too. Maybe I can just do it with just with the pencil like this. In other words, without uh, you know any additional water. Although we could keep it everything consistent, maybe. So let's anchor this one down a little bit more with a little bit of deeper shadows here and there. All right, let's finish this piece off. Let's grab 100% uh, cotton cotton ball and some white pigment ink. Uh, use any brand of pigment ink that you want. All right, and roughly I'm gonna be adding in this in right around my waterfall areas, especially around the base. It's already kind of cloudy looking as is, but we'll see if we can um, kind of enhance that a little bit more, okay? Um, we're enhancing kind of not the, it's not really making it too much lighter it's it's making it a little bit lighter but from a textural standpoint I think it makes it a little bit softer looking and more kind of misty um, with this type of kind of powdery uh, light application over the top here over the top of my, you know, paint work, <laughs> brush work. Okay, so this right here, I'll come into this um, mountain here a little bit, like about like so. It kind of puts, it sandwiches the, the mountains in a little bit of that misty haze, I guess you can say. I 
I gotta see this one right back here. Let's make that, since that's the most distant one, I'll just come in here from the top. And I'll just go like that. Yeah, I don't put it over the whole thing. I, you could, but um, I usually like to make it look a little bit um, more uh, varied by having some just as is and some a little bit um, hazy. And see, I'll put some right over the top of this one right here. See that right there? And let's go into this one. So right here. It's already, the, the impression's already lighter because that's why I designed them, but you're just kind of reiterating that a little bit. So I'm making the light things look a little lighter. And then in the shadow areas with the pen I made, uh, or pencil, I made those ones a little bit um, darker. You can almost, you can really uh, say that this scene is almost kind of more about the the mist than it is about the imagery. The imagery is just kind of there to oh, kind of frame and uh, to I don't know, kind of describe the mist because you've get you know what I mean because you you wouldn't be able to see this application without um, you know the the darker imagery around it. some of this down here too. Uh, a little bit of that fog. And you know, I've already applied it in many of these areas. I'm just kind of going over and uh, applying a, a little bit of a thicker application. Uh, just to kind of build it up because it does dry um, darker and uh, more see-through than what it looks like when it's been freshly applied and or still wet. I'm talking about the pigment ink. So you got to use a little bit more than kind of what it looks like um, to your eye in an ideal state. Let it dry and then see what it looks like. Then, you know, if you need to add more, then go add more. And that, that way you can kind of build it up too a little bit. Okay, so these are the waterfalls like that. I'll frame this off and let's take a look at and see what it looks like. Um, kind of a uh, mount it up here. And I'll, I'll see if I need to um, kind of adjust uh, some of the uh, different areas on here a little bit more. Like, you know, I don't know, we can always go a little bit kind of more defined with our kind of plunging water, maybe. Like this. <laughs> I'm going to apply too much because I don't want to go over it with water again, but... Um, Alright, so a little bit more defined up in my mountains there. Alright, let's get this uh, mounted up. I'll probably put a little piece of black around it, maybe, I don't know, white or silver or something like that, and see what it looks like. Alright, just a simple mat or mount with a little bit of black right here around the perimeter. 
I don't know, maybe a less than an eighth of an inch. I don't know, something like that. And then, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch of uh, gold around the edges like that. And I think it looks pretty good. I was just going to go with silver, but I tried that before, and I thought that looked pretty good, and I wanted to try gold. It looked pretty decent when I held it up to it, but let's see. Let's add a little bit more tone right in here. I'm going to do this really faintly. Just to kind of uh, bring out those falls just a slight bit more. In a couple areas, I'm going to try to go... I don't want to go too dark because I've already kind of misted over it. Not that you can't add, you know, more uh, mist, but just a couple little minor tweaks here. If you just make something, you know, within the scene slightly darker, the lighter areas seem slightly lighter, okay? And, I don't know, I just wanted to have a little bit more of a substantial kind of a I don't know, whatever structures, forms within this uh, space. So going just slightly darker uh, right over the top here. Well, this is a pretty quick and easy card. Um, I mean, it's... It's just doing a little bit of a tweak on, you know, some of the uh, very kind of minimalist. I don't know if it's really minimalist, but, you know, kind of the simple types of applications within these, uh, you know, this new mystic line. It's just kind of opening up some space in between some mountains and doing this little kind of uh, stroke application there. You can do it. You can try it in different types of media, too. Maybe, I don't know. Colored pencils, dye inks, or something like that. Colored pencils wouldn't be too much different than this. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't look too, like, graceful, what you do is you just add some of that um, white pigment ink right over the top. Oh, oh, it got a little bit too dark right there, so... Um, yeah, this, you know, kind of remedies it all. Think about like so. <laughs> It does for me, at least. It covers up a lot of my uh, well, kind of rougher applications of media. Plus, I mean, when you add it in there, it just makes it look better, too. So you're obscuring and enhancing at the same time. All right, so that is it right there. A little bit of waterfall kind of uh, formations there. Kind of adds to that little extra mystic type of uh, look, I think. You know, having some, you know, waterfalls in the mix, which is kind of fun. That uh, the waterfalls are in there <laughs> for you to use. You just have to kind of develop it. I, I do have this, uh, I had a couple stamps that there are waterfalls to be meant to be used with this, but it's just kind of cool that, uh, that you can use these as waterfalls just kind of inherently. This is kind of interesting. I'm moving around that white um, pigment ink there. That white pigment ink that I'm using is water-based, so it goes by, back in solution. You can kind of paint with a little bit of white in here, too, like this. A couple little fur balls. Let me get those out of there <laughs> for my cotton ball. All right, so, I don't know, fun with, fun with forms. Hope you like the uh, scene and uh, kind of technique. So just any gaps in between your um, mountains like that. You know, you can become a become a raging waterfall if you want it to be. Or you just do one real narrow kind of streak and just, you know, bring this um, area maybe a little bit closer and make it darker and have one little area like that going. That'd be cool, too. All right, so all kinds of possibilities and uh, seemingly never-ending. All right, thanks again for watching. Hope you uh, enjoyed it and... Hope you like and subscribe to the channel.